Our master's programme at Manchester gives you the choice to specialise in any of three interconnected areas. So there's the History of Science, Technology and Medicine programme. That covers 19th century and particularly 20th century history. So you will find out about the Cold War, uh, the growth of big physics, climate science, ideas like the National Health Service, these things, personal computers. Well, I actually did my undergraduate at the University of Manchester. Um, I did a biotechnology degree. The reason why I decided to join the history of science, technology and medicine was because it allowed me to really see science in a different light than what I've been used to. In medical humanities, we use approaches from history, from literature, from drama, music and the visual arts to uh, get to know how medicine and healthcare have been practiced and experienced over the ages. And this course is usually for medical students who are intercalating as part of their medical degree, but it's also open to students who come with no background in medicine as well. I think I was mostly attracted to um, medical humanities because I wanted a change from the sort of quite prescriptive course of medicine. And I have always sort of really enjoyed the humanities, like at A-level and GCSE, and I really wanted a chance to sort of come back to that. and just like kind of broaden my horizons a bit for a year before going back into the very sort of medical world. On the science communication course we study the public communication of science as a practice so that's something you can do but we also think about it as part of our culture, our politics uh, and our economy. We think about how its meanings make a difference to the way in which we make decisions politically and in business and in our everyday life. I came to study science communication at Manchester um, because the elements of history that are taught within the course appealed to me. Learning about how science is actually social um, and is a community-based activity was a complete revelation to me. Teaching is provided by the Centre for the History of Science, Technology and Medicine. We are one of the largest research groups in Britain and in 2013 we organised the biggest uh, meeting in the history of the field with more than 1,700 visiting researchers from around the world. MSc students have office space and access to this specialist library in the centre. Uh, the University Library is one of the largest in the country and the University also runs the amazing John Rylands Library in the city centre with its rare book and archive collections. The one thing I like about the course is the discussion sessions that we have on the articles that we are, we are given to read. It's quite close-knit and you get the opinions of others and that also helps in further understanding of the subject material which sometimes can be difficult for a person who is not um, familiar with uh, the history of his country like myself, so it's quite useful. It's given me the opportunity to read things that I never would have even thought to read and kind of just to like discuss and have opinions that can vary from yes or no answers. We've come today to the Brains Exhibition at the Museum of Science and Industry, just up the road from the University in Manchester. Uh, this is uh, an exhibition uh, that originally ran in London. Um, it's being restaged uh, in Manchester with some content based on local research, so we're quite excited about that. But it also includes a lot of detail about Manchester University practices around human anatomy and brain anatomy that we've been discussing as part of our coursework. It's a really exciting chance for the students who are on the regular HSTM masters as well as the students who are doing a science communication or a medical humanities pathway. It's a good chance for them to get together and to view the kinds of objects that are in the museum and that they can even use to study as part of their dissertation work. This is a research project where you get a chance to make an original contribution to a topic that fascinates you. We've had a whole range of subjects uh, in the past including stray dogs in Victorian cities, a history of recording studios and the use of stage drama in science communication. We have a good track record of funding for our master's students to go on to PhD research and further study. Uh, other master's graduates have gone into fields including museums and libraries, uh, science communication, 
science policy work. I graduated from um, Manchester with MSc in science communication and now I'm a junior consultant at a PR firm that specialises in science, technology and engineering. I think it was really helpful to learn about demographics and to learn how if you say something it isn't necessarily interpreted the way you want it to be. So the science communication course is really helpful. Also so is the history of science. I'm writing articles and I'm managing accounts and I'm promoting products. A big part of my day is then writing. I write feature articles for journals, um, national press if possible. I run social media, which I really enjoy. It's great fun.